The ceremony of the day is to, uh, to honor Harlan Knight, who was the younger son of, of, of Samuel and Lydia Knight, and the young, younger brother of Gardner, whose flag and grave is back there in the back of the cemetery. Gardner brought Harlan home from Fredericksburg. Uh, Harlan, like I said, was the uh, younger son of Samuel and Lydia. They were a close-knit family, farm family in Hancock. They lived out on Knight Farm Road. The house is still there. For years, uh, Bobby Nylander and Russ Nylander's family owned the farm, and it recently uh, passed into the hands of Woody Huntington and Sam Huntington, and they currently own it. Um, at the time of the war, Harlan was attending Bowdoin College at the same time Joshua Chamberlain was teaching. So I like to think there was some synergy between Harlan and Joshua Chamberlain at the time. At the start of the war, uh, Harlan was at Bowdoin. He came back home. He and Gardner enlisted in the 6th New Hampshire Volunteer Regiment, Company E. These fellows are here, the 6th New Hampshire Regiment, Company E. So they're honoring their own, as we are today. Um, they enlisted on August 18th, 1862, for a period of three years. Harlan was 24, Gardner was 37. They were, they were pretty old for volunteers at that time. They mustered in Keene, where they drilled and trained for a number of months, and then made the long trip to Virginia to confront the Confederate Army. In December of that year, um, the armies met at Fredericksburg. The Confederates held the high ground outside of the city. The Union troops held the town itself, and the Confederates were up on a, on a hill behind the town, behind a stone wall. And on December 13th, the Union army assaulted and assaulted and assaulted and assaulted to no avail. And then near the end of the day, knowing that it was impossible, the 6th New Hampshire Regiment nonetheless made their way up the battlefield, up the heights. They got uh, decimated and Harlan uh, was wounded three times. Uh, about three or four days later, and Harlan appeared to be fine, he had, he had some wounds, but he appeared to be okay. But about three or four days later, he became uh, totally insensible and uh, died, um, died of his wounds. Um, his brother Gardner, Brought him back to town. Um, shortly thereafter, I think on the 27th, and the following day, the 28th of December, the town showed up here where we are today, standing right here, and they buried Harlan in this very spot. Um, we're lucky to have uh, two direct descendants of Harlan here today. We have Marjorie Knight Fouget, who is Harlan's that's great. Grand niece. Is that correct? Great. We think. Great niece? Great niece. And we have Ed Ware, who lives in town. And he's Harlan's great great grand nephew. I got that one right. Okay. And his great great grand niece. And who? Diane Flagg is his great great grand niece. And Diane Flagg, who I didn't know was going to be here, is his great great grand niece. Wow. So maybe all three should come forward and, and lay the wreath on Harlan's grave. After all, direct descendants. That doesn't happen every day. You all set? Yeah, hold on. Hold on. There you go. There you go.